Okay, so then, of course, the question is, all right, that's fine for, like, civil disagreements and so but what about actual crimes? How, how would that work? And so here I'll, I'll start bringing in now the, the issue of uh, actual enforcement of the law, too. So somebody, I, I come, I'm driving home, I see some guy breaking into my house, and he runs out with a TV. And I get it, so I, you know, he, he gets away before I can stop him. And I, I see him running out, and I'm pretty sure it's the guy from down the street. I can't stand that guy, and I just know he's a criminal, right? So I'm pretty sure he's the guy that took my TV. And so I go down to his house the next day, and I accuse him of it. I say, give me my TV back. I can look in there and see it. It's a TV that looks just like mine. And he says, you're nuts. That's, I've had this for three months, whatever. So we can't resolve it. Now, I could. Let's say I'm absolutely certain that that's my TV. You might say, especially from a Rothbardian point of view, you might say that I'm perfectly morally justified in just marching in and taking that TV. And if this guy is, is a tough guy or like he's, you know, he's got a pit bull or something, you might even go further and say, I'm justified in calling up a bunch of buddies to come shoot the dog and take the television set, you know, <laughs> bind the guy or whatever, not kill him, but, you know, do what I need to do to get my TV. You might even go that far and say, well, you know, it's his fault. He aggressed against me. I can do, you know, do the, the least amount of damage to him to get my TV back for sure. And that's his own fault if he's putting obstacles in my way. So, but, so my point is whether, whatever your views on that issue are, that's irrelevant because the community is not going to like me doing that. They're not going to like people just unilaterally saying, this guy's a criminal, he took my TV, I'm dead certain, and so I'm going to get a bunch of my buddies and break down his door and shoot his dog and, and take the television set. Right? That's just not, that's not a neighborly thing to do. My employer's not going to like that. They're going to say, yeah, we heard that you're breaking down. What are you doing? You know? So you, you get the point. That It's just not smart to do that. So rather than do that, I'm going to want to have a professional agency come to people that are trained. They might you know, have... Guys that are, uh, you know, burly guys with uh, bulletproof stuff on and, you know, fl- flak jackets and things, and like maybe the, the plastic stuff that the police use, the riots use, you know, so that they can be, and that they would have non lethal means, like they would have nets and foam guns and stuff like that, or right? they wouldn't come in with guns blazing to get a TV because that, that would be reckless. There would be no reason to escalate it to that level. Okay, so that's, so you would do that, but then even there, the, um, the, the private agent, the, the enforcement agencies, again, they wouldn't just take my word for it. They couldn't just say, yep, whoever comes in here and is willing to plunk down the money, we'll go and get TVs for you and break down doors and give them to you, right? That'd be crazy because they, how do they know whether that really is the TV or the right person's TV? So those agencies would say, before we act on your behalf, you have to bring us an opinion from a reputable judge saying, you know, ruling in your favor. So what I have to do in this case I, you know, I say to my neighbor, hey, that's my TV. He says, no, it's not. And I said, well, then prove it. You know, get, show me the receipt if you said you bought it three months ago. He said, I don't have it. I said, well, what store did you buy it from? I'll go ask them if it's in their record. And he said, no, I paid cash from some guy in the street. Sorry. Right? And he's just making up you know, he, all these convenient excuses. And then I can say, all right. And I'm telling all my neighbors, this guy stole my TV. They're, oh, really? And so I challenge him. And I say, look, at here. And I come up with a list of a bunch of reputable arbitrators who specialize in you know, burglary and so forth and say, here you go. Here's a list of 20 people within 15 minutes of driving. I'm willing to take our case to any one of them, and then I will agree with whatever that, that arbitrator decides because I think I have a strong case against you. And then, you know, maybe I have a security camera and, and so forth. Maybe I have a bunch of circumstantial evidence. Maybe I'm saying, just let's look at the serial number on your TV because I have the receipt from when I bought it, and I'm telling you that's my TV, but he won't let me in his house to look at the serial number. All right, so I do that, and then if he just says, no, I, I don't. These these arbitrators are all a bunch of uh, uh, s- s- scoundrels. Let's use my brother-in-law. He's a, he's fair, right? <laughs> Take it or leave it. If he does, you know, if he's acting like that, th- my neighbors are going to start to say, okay, Bob is in the right. This guy stole his TV, and maybe you know. And so I'll say, well, since you're being r- ridiculous, I'm going to go to one of these professional arbitrators who hears thirty cases like this a week, and you know, there's never been an issue of them taking bribes or anything, and they've given rulings, and they always explain why they ruled the way they did, you know, in the ruling, and it's, you know, no other legal theorist or scholar has ever thought these people did anything outrageous. You know, their colleagues think, that, oh, these, these are guys are, are, and women are good judges. So I'm going to just pick one of them, since you're not being helpful here, and I'm going to take my case, and we're going to try it, and if you don't show up, t- tough for you, and then that judge may decide that, okay, so the guy doesn't do that, and so I take it to some judge, reputable judge, and, I, you know, I'll probably take it to somebody who's got a reputation for being really hard on, on criminals. And so then the judge makes the ruling, and he says, yep, 
I agree. This guy stole your TV. Okay, so now I go back to the, the enforcement agency, you know, the, the, the company that hires a bunch of goons to come in, and I show them that, oh, Judge Hoppe has ruled in, in favor of this. Like I show them, and, and you know, there's, I've given notice to the other guy saying there's now this pending ruling where a judge agrees you took my TV. Do you want to dispute that? And he says, no, that guy Hoppe is crazy, blah, blah, blah. All right. So at that point now, I go to that security agency and say, look, I don't want to go into this guy's house by myself. I need, you know, you call them the big guns. And they say, okay, sure. And then he comes in. <laughs> All right. And he comes and gets the TV. All right. So you, you get the point, though, that what I'm getting at here is that you, I think you need to disentangle the issue of who dis, how is it decided that there it has been a crime or not. And then once that's an issue and there's no doubt, so the community is not going to think that, that Guido is, is a criminal. They're not going to look at him going into a house and put, coming out with a TV and saying, oh, my gosh, he's a criminal. Because for one thing, he's going to be doing it in broad daylight. He's going to have a big van with his number, you know, call us if, if some looter takes your stuff, you know. We hate looters. And, <laughs> and, and, he's, going to, and he's going to be very professional. Like I said, he's going to have a lot of body armor and stuff like, well, he doesn't need it, but you know the point. So... <laughs> And he's not, and the crucial thing is, he's not going to kill the guy. He's probably not even going to hurt him. Like, long, you know, he may, they may incapacitate him, like, put a, a net on him or some of those, you know, those, those things, and they. <laughs> so, you, you get the point. Because it would be bad for business. You, you now, you might say, well, no, they have the right to do it. Like, if they go in there and that guy uh, comes in with a kitchen knife, they can shoot him in the head. You, yeah, maybe morally you think they have the right to do it, but that would be bad for business. No one's going to want to hire them again because that's just a nightmare. It's a bad, you know, to say, oh, some guy took my TV, I hired some guys to get it back, and the, and the guy ended up dead. You know, that's in, in his own house. That doesn't sound good, right? So it would be much better if they go in and, you know, incapacitate the person, you know, whether, like, maybe they, they knock out a window and shoot in tear gas and make the guy leave the house first. And, and they, of course, would have checked before to make sure there's not, like, an infant sleeping or something, you know. The point is they would be much more careful... Because there's competition, because they kept doing stuff like that, and, you know, oh, we got to get tough on these criminals, and, and Guido feared for his life. No, well, okay, maybe he would be exonerated, but he wouldn't get any more business. All right, so, that, so that's the idea, that the stuff we associate with police brutality now, and you see these, it is, it is just shocking. I don't know if you guys look at this stuff, but no matter how much a police officer overreacts to something, like whether it's a 13-year-old in a school who mouths off and he, like, beats the heck out of the kid and tackles him and breaks his nose. People always say in the comments with those news articles, stuff like, well, you know, these police are putting their lives on the line every day. And you know, I mean, it, it, they could do anything, literally anything, and there would be people who just rush to their defense. So my point is, that happens because it's a monopoly. People think they have to choose between having law enforcement or not. And then, well, if we have to have it, then, yeah, sometimes people, they overreact and whatever, but that's just the cost of living in a society of laws. And no, it's not. That's the cost of living in a society with one group that has a monopoly on law enforcement. Okay, uh, let me just take a minute talking about this interesting question. Would there be prisons in a free society? 